Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today we're going to talk about the movies with the baddest bitches currently available on Netflix. So for those of you that maybe are in different countries or are just not hip to the lingo, bad is definitely a term of endearment. And I've featured a lot of action movies on some recent lists. I'll put links to those videos in the description. But in this video, I wanted to feature some of the best action movies, thrillers, there's even a comedy on this list that all are let off by some of the baddest bitches in movies today. And if you think me censoring myself, even though this is the video topic is weird, it's because YouTube is so censorship happy, but this should fly. This video is also sponsored by 80s Tees. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the video, but let's go ahead and start with my number pin pick, which is the comedy on the list and the only real comedy, The Wrong Missy. Alive. Damn it! Now, I know some of you maybe are already rolling your eyes. This is an Adam Sandler production. He's not in it. David Spade actually is the main character here. But Lauren Lapkus really not only carries this movie, she makes this movie. She is hilarious. Now, I do have to say, this is lowbrow humor. It's raunchy, it's irreverent, but it is fun and Again, she absolutely kills it. I had zero expectations for this movie, but I watch a lot of these Netflix originals so I can potentially review them for you here on the channel. And I've seen her in other things, but from the moment she appears on screen in this movie, she is killing it. I mean, more so than you've seen somebody kill it in a comedy in a really long time. Now, ultimately the movie itself, while it was okay, it wasn't enough to sort of transcend uh, this sort of Netflix original Adam Sandler thing and become this really great classic movie, but she managed to really elevate it. There's some fantastic comedy actors that have great moments and stuff, but she really does make this movie work, which is why I had to include it on this list. Now my number nine pick is another Netflix original, and I honestly was lukewarm on it, but Charlize Theron is a total badass in the old guard. Now this is a prime example of a Netflix original movie, or at least a prime example of a good one, because had this come out in theaters and I paid 10 bucks and went and sat and dealt with all the people making all the noise in the theater, I would have been disappointed in this movie. However, watching it on my couch on a Friday night when it premiered, I totally dug it. It was a fun action movie. It's got a wild premise about this special elite force. There is sort of like a supernatural element that comes into play that's pretty cool. This is based on a graphic novel series by the same name. And the graphic novel series does look edgier and cooler with different color palettes and style. Whereas I didn't feel like the movie itself had very much style. This movie's also very, very chatty for an action movie, which caused it to lose some points for me. But Charlize carries it. There's a couple other actors in there that I have liked in some other things. So it was cool to sort of see them get to play alongside her. So as far as like Netflix original action movies go, this is one that has stood out to me. I have featured my number eight pick on lists before, and this features multiple bad bitches. But while I do love the look of this one, I don't really love the delivery of the story in Sucker Punch. This is a Zack Snyder project, and I find his storytelling abilities to not really be as tight as you would like them to be in a big director like this. But that said, Sucker Punch is an amazing looking movie. It's not just polished and good looking either. It's got some really incredible creative visuals unlike anything you've seen in any other movie. He's mixing things together that you wouldn't think would work. And ultimately, story-wise, they maybe don't really serve a purpose and don't really work that well, but on screen, it's incredible. Ultimately, this is kind of like a two-hour music video, but it's a great one. 
Now, as an overall movie, my number seven pick is kind of famously flawed, but Gina Carano is the ultimate badass in Haywire. Now, this is famously flawed because it's from director Steven Soderbergh, who is a very famous director. He did the Oceans trilogy, Traffic. He's got a great pedigree in terms of being a top tier director. And this is one of his sloppier movies. There's a lot of things that didn't work with this one in the production. Gina Carano, this was her first big role in a movie. It has this throwback vibe. Steven Soderbergh was directing it. Channing Tatum was an up and coming star. He's in it. Ewan McGregor, Antonio Banderas, Michael Fassbender. I mean, the list just goes on with the cast and the production team, but it just kind of is a half-assed movie at the end. Ultimately though, if you like this type of movie, this sort of throwback spy action thing, Haywire's got some fantastic sequences in it, including multiple fights where Gina Carano is really landing a lot of blows all in camera, like it's not chopped up. It works well in that respect. And I've dug it, I've rewatched it multiple times. And again, while it's not perfect, I love so many elements of it that I still do enjoy this movie a lot. And then we will wrap up my bottom five with <laughs> not an obvious pick at all, but I gotta say Jennifer Lopez really kills it in Anaconda. Now, Anaconda is kind of viewed as this silly movie and I think that's totally appropriate. This is just a silly monster movie, but it's really effective in that category. Not just because it's got a great monster with this giant snake, which has a fantastic blend of CGI that is outdated looking at times, but it's also mixed in with a lot of practical effects and sort of puppeted life-size anacondas or even just say oversized anacondas. I love that aspect, but the characters in this one are fun too. You got a good character from Jennifer Lopez, obviously. You got Ice Cube, Owen Wilson plays a goofy character. And then you've got John Voight playing this really bizarre role. This is one of his weirder roles, but I dug that. I love this like, again, like a top tier actor, like a really famous award-winning actor playing this really bizarre character in essentially like a midnight monster movie. I dig that. The only thing with Anaconda that I do not like is that it's PG-13, so it's got a little less teeth than it would have had otherwise, but still, just a cool flick all around. Now, if you love cool flicks as much as I do, you should definitely check out 80stees.com. They have tons of movie-themed designs that are not just super slick. Some of them are really funny, some of them are really vintage looking, and they're all revolve around 80s movies, 90s movies, 2000 movies, TV shows, video games, and classic brands. Here are a couple of the shirts I've bought recently from 80stees.com, and my viewers get a special deal. They can currently save 30% off their order when they go to 80stees.com using the link in the description and use code FLICK30. That's code FLICK30 to save 30% on some awesome t-shirt designs. No matter what you're into, movie, TV wise, odds are they've got several, if not way too many t-shirts to choose from over on 80stees.com. I love their selection. I go back and check it regularly and I often find something that I just have to have like the ones I just showed you. So again, for my viewers only, use code FLICK30 and save 30% off your cool t-shirts at 80stees.com. Now, Kate Beckinsale is undeniably one of the baddest bitches in movie history, and she is at her baddest in the Underworld series, which is currently on Netflix. I personally like the original. I think it's the best. While these are not my favorite movies, they are just fantastic. Turn your brain off. Watch Kate Beckinsale whoop ass in her leather outfits. And as brainless as that sounds, there is a story that works. It all sort of works together well and then just oozes this style that was definitely pulled from the Matrix, but I don't mind that at all. You add Matrix style, Kate Beckinsale, vampires and werewolves, I kind of don't care if the story's not great. You got enough things in the soup that are working for me that I still dig it. Now, one of the more serious movies on this list is Double Jeopardy. This stars Ashley Judd as a woman who is essentially set up and framed to have killed her husband. She does time in prison and cannot be tried for it again. So this is a classic sort of revenge thriller 
This was a big deal when it came out. I think I might have been in middle school when this movie came out, but it was the thing everybody was talking about for like a month. So if you've never seen it, it's, it's a definitely a good Netflix watch right now. It's a little bit dated, but still just a good, solid thriller with good performances from Ashley Judd and Tommy Lee Jones, who was really just killing it in the 90s, did a lot of his best work then. This is a good example of some good Tommy Lee Jones, and it's just a good, fun thriller. You probably are gonna see some things coming, but so what, it's still enjoyable. Now, the most unknown and unwatched one on this list is also one of the just most insane, off the rails movies that I've seen in a while, and that is The Witch Part One, The Subversion. This is from South Korea, and it is a supernatural sci-fi thriller action thing that just gets really wild. Now, I will have to tell you, this one takes a while getting in. While they do set up sort of the intensity of this story at the beginning really well, it's a little bit slow paced throughout the middle, but once you get to the final act of this movie, I'm not gonna tell you anything else, but it just gets wild. And the sad thing about this one is there's no sequel in production. This one's called part one. I think it's starting to gain some steam uh, through not just my videos, but just through people recommending this movie online. So watch it, post about it, let people know so that we can get a sequel to this because you, when you finish watching it, you're gonna desperately want a sequel. Now my number two pick is the reason I decided to make this list and theme it this way. I rewatched it, it was recently added to Netflix. It's about 10 years old and it is so much better than I remember it being and that is Columbiana. Yes, I did misspell it on screen in recent memory, but I cannot believe how good this movie is. I also can't believe it's PG-13. This is one of the most brutal movies I've ever seen with a PG-13 rating. Tons of blood, bullet wounds, it's vicious, it's violent, and it definitely should have been rated R. I don't know how they got a PG-13 rating out of this, especially 10 years ago when it came out, but Zoe Saldana kills it in this movie, quite literally. She really carries it, and it's long, it's toothy, it's almost two hours, and just has a lot going on in it. And I remember it being just pretty mediocre, and I was way wrong. It's way better than I remember. Now, the baddest bitch on this list is not an action star. She's not really a good person. She's not really an admirable person. She is bad, bad, bad. And that is Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct. This is a classic thriller for a reason. Not only is Sharon Stone smoking hot in it, but she really drives this movie. And even though Michael Douglas is obviously a heavy hitting actor and he's really the main character, her sinister, manipulative, mastermind kind of a character that she plays really is what makes this movie work. It's got some classic scenes in it. If you've never seen it because you thought it was just kind of this silly little sex thriller, there's some great sequences in this movie. Let me know what you plan on watching in the comments below. Let's also take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters. They have been a great source of support for Flick Connection. We are continuing to grow. At the time of me filming this, we are almost at 200,000. And I have all of you to thank, but especially these Patreon supporters. They have been big, big time supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, check out the link in the description below, see what the benefits are, see if it's for you, or click the join button below the video and see about becoming a channel member where you can get access to exclusive videos. But I will keep making videos like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this special episode and you will see me on the next one.